I'm Dusty Haasauer, saddle bronc rider. Rodeo Houston rap starts now. <laughs> And there's a look at Casey Field, number two in the world, riding bareback here at Rodeo Houston. Hi, everyone, and welcome into Rodeo Houston Wrap. It is semifinals two. Everyone looking to advance to the finals. Will Casey advance? Who will and who won't? Well, let's get right to the guys who called all the action, Bob Tallman and Boyd Polhamus. Thanks, Patty. That's a great question. A four-time champion of Rodeo Houston, a four-time world. Did he advance? Well, we'll tell you that here in a second. Bobby T, uh, some disappointments tonight, but but always excited about the four guys that went forward. Well, last night I kind of wandered into it, but tonight I'm going to tell you this. They're either world, a world champion or a rookie, and they all matched up together, but they did advance. But some surprises. Tyler oh, yeah. Weg is back. I mean, he had owned it. I mean, he's the reigning champion of the world, and he's not. He's going to the wild card. I mean, it's just it's just crazy, some of the things. You, let's sort it all out for you right now, shall we? We'll start with the highlights of the Rough Stock events. Bareback bronc riding like the young gun, the former college national champ that grew up just down Highway 59, the Southwest Freeway in Victoria. 87 points. Beautiful ride for Lane. Well, three horses ago, the kid from Mandan North, North Dakota, I thought we were going to kill him. Ty Brewer, to show how tough he is, he's getting better and better, and he ties for 87 with McGee. So there they are at the top, Tilden Hooper, riding the best he's ever rode, and there is the four-time champion of the yeah. world, Casey Field. We answer Patty's question. Casey does indeed, but it's the bottom spot. That was a whew, sweat your eyebrows out. Right or right? Wow, he's human. He didn't win the round. 86 points for Superman. Uh, just a beautiful pain horse and rider did his job. Well, the master shows up, and Cody DeMoss. Here he is not only the reigning champion, but he's been a champion everywhere. It's 87 points by one. DeMoss is going to be at the top, then right, then the world champion, Jacob Scrawley. And Sam Keltz, the Canadian, slides in for a fourth. Yeah, at 82, snuck in there, Sammy, and proud of you, son. Now to the bull riding competition where Brody Yuri, the last guy to go, had to ride this bull. If he just covered him, he knew he would be going on to the championship round and not through the wild card, and he did for 82 points. Well, Trevor Kastner and Boyd always talks about him being over 30 years old. Look at the old man in this sport, 85 points, and he made it look easy. That big bull was soggy. You bet he was. His name was Hambone. I wonder why they named him that. Um, Kastner, 85. Yuri, 82. Williams, 79. Sellers, 77. Not big scores in the bull riding, but it got him to the championship round. Two things. Number one, on Cody Wright, or excuse me, Cody DeMoss, 37 years old. He's won this rodeo the last two years in a row. Can he three-peat? Yes. Okay. All right. The uh, reason is... There's something about him the last two years when you th least think that Cody DeMoss is going to make it handle. He'll safety and when he needs to do this thing, and then when it's time to rip, he'll reach and set the steel in the neck and go on with it. And that's what we have to do once yeah. we get to the championship round yeah. in those events. you got to let it rip or you're not yeah. going to win the 50 grand. And he's one of the best at letting it rip. Let's see who let it rip tonight in the timed events. Starting with a tie down roping the second generation champion, Riley Pruitt. His dad, Troy, was a world champ back in the 90s, early 90s. Riley had a little trouble gathering those legs, but that nine and six would work out. Well, I'll show you what six tenths of a second is quicker. Here it is, champion of the world. It's Caleb Schmidt from just up the road. He made that look so easy. Gonna be nine flat, then you're Pruitt with a nine six. Hanchi. There's the world champion in Cody Kwani. See, new guy slides in yep. with a 10 3. You see those new faces coming in, right? So now we go to the team roping, and this is Clay Tryon, obviously a 16 time NFR qualifier and a three time world champ. Roping with Travis Graves. They'd steal it with a 4.7. Masters and Harrison, another world champion. Driggers and Nogata, another world champion. And Tashir and Corkle with three world titles on the heel catch its side. That's who's moving on to the team roping. Now let's take a peek at the steer wrestling. Big Will Loomis, Boomalaka, first guy to go 4.8. <laughs> Just how big is he? Tanner Bruner, another new name. We see him a lot. But he's going to be 4-6 to beat the gentle giant by two-tenths of a second. There it is, Bruner, then Big Will, Ty Erickson, Montana, Jesse Brown, 
another new name in the rookie mm-hmm. comes from Baker City, Oregon. And again, no Ty Wagus back there. Quite, no. a, quite a feat. Now, Brittany Tanazi. Her and this red horse have yet to run by a barrel. Now, she's doing her job. She's making sure he sees them and checking him up in plenty of time. But she came in there 1444, and we weren't sure anybody would beat it. But then you pointed out Carly didn't miss a turn. Well, this is Carly serving the way the gray horse is supposed to run. And we've been coaching her. Look at that razor leg get around the barrel. 1432 is going to put serving in the number one spot. Then the two time champion. Then Shally Lord waits to the last minute from Colorado. Hey, Terry Bangert, new name again. So I want to talk uh, before we do any analysis on this. Just, I mean, the the wild card round. I mean, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow night? Punishment. And I say (laughs) (laughs) punishment. You have have a way of saying it. I have a way of saying it. Folks, this is where they bring the horses nobody wants to get on. The bulls that will hook your shorts off. And when it comes to the timed events, it's guts, all guts, and not a lot of glory. Only two spots. Yeah, 12 guys well, at each event. Only two are going to be advancing, and we see a lot of great talent heading into that final oh yeah. wild card round tomorrow night. So one of them that isn't going there is a rodeo Houston champion. He's a world champion. He's probably one of the biggest sports fans you'll ever meet, especially if it's got anything to do with LSU, okay? His name is Shane Hanchy, and he's a great interview, a very intelligent young man. And when we come back, Patty Smith will be chatting with Shane about his advancement to championship night. So stay right where you're at. Patty Smith with Shane Hanchy when we come back. Stampede Bucking Horse fan. Yo, yo, yo. Ray he is lifting that horse. Hey. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. We got problems. Oh, my God, we got problems. See, when you go, look at that. Bulletproof. And welcome back to the show. Joining me now, Shane Hanchi. Been on the show many times. Probably needs no introduction, but tie down Roper. Made it out of the semifinals, advancing to the finals for your seventh or eighth time. No stranger to it, but I know this never gets old. No, it never gets old, especially at this venue. Uh, came here for the Texans playoff game and um, just big Astros fan, big Houston fan. And uh, it's cool to come in here and do what we do for a living and then get to watch them guys do what they do for a living in the same venue. So to come back here, and you've taken home that $50,000 check before. You won it in 2012. What does that mean? I mean, it's not just a check. This is life-changing money for a Cowboy. Yeah, anytime we can win that kind of money at one spot, at one venue, is is pretty crazy. But uh, especially this year that it counts. You know, the year I won it was the first year it didn't count for the PRCA. So I think it would be a pretty cool story to uh, – to win it the first time that it counts again. So uh, that, that's, a, that's a lot of money in our pockets, and that's even more important to the world standings. Well, and it's interesting because you talk about it counts, and yes, that is important, but you guys, every cowboy I've ever talked to, love Rodeo Houston, whether it counts or not. Oh, we're here no matter what. If y'all tell us it counts, we're here. If y'all tell us it don't count, we're here. And, uh, you know, living right inside the Louisiana line, this is my biggest quote unquote hometown rodeo closest for us so my family will be here Saturday and uh, we'll be looking forward to it okay, we're looking forward to it too we got to take one more time out don't go anywhere Boyd will join me when we come back Welcome back to the show. Patty Smith and Boyd Paul Hamas wrapping it up after tonight. We've only got two more times to do this as mm-hmm. we head into the wild card round tomorrow night. And for these Cowboys, most of them probably only have one more night. Yeah. Well, obviously 10 of the 12 that are out tomorrow night in the wild card will be done. They'll be going home. Two of them, however, through fickle form of fate, they, they're, able to, form of fate. <laughs> that they're able to advance because the wild card is just not a user friendly way to get to the championship finals. And so and it's weird because you're going to see Trevor Brazil in the wild card. You're going to see Fred Whitfield in the wild card. Will, the, will this be Fred's last trip unless he makes it out of there? You're going to see the two world champion bull riders, J.W. Harris and Sage Kimsey. It's just bizarre the talent that is going to be up in this treacherous contest tomorrow. Well, talk about the treacherous contest. We say wild card. It's probably a little self-explanatory. I'm sure you can imagine, but explain exactly what happens in the wild. All right, I'll try to be brief. Top four. (laughs) Not possible. (laughs) Okay, top four from each semifinal already advanced to Saturday. The six from each semifinal that didn't 
are out tomorrow night. There's 12 in each contest, but only two advance. And what we do on that night was, as far as stock is concerned, we put out the bucket horses that all have a trick. I mean, they'll do everything but pull a knife on you. Same with the bulls. Plus, the best timed event cattle, whether they're calves or steers, are being held back for the championship round. And so the uglier ones are going to be the ones that they have to try to compete and win first or second in order to advance to Saturday. No such thing as an ugly horse. Like, there's no such thing as an ugly baby. But, <laughs> right. um, you know, going through this, look, we, we've said it a million times, and I know we're trying to be brief here and wrap it all up, but no one wants to go through the wild card tomorrow night. But, boy, they're sure glad they have this last Well, the effort. two that win, the first and second place finishers, are very glad we have a wild card. The other ten are like, why did I even have to stay and go through this? But it's, a, it, it's one of the best rodeos to watch because it's sudden death. Do or and, die. Yeah, do or die. Win exactly. or go home. All right, well, we are not going to win right now, but we are going to go home. We're out of time. We will see you tomorrow night. Come on out here to Rodeo Houston, catch the wild card, or watch us right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Have a great day. Here is Raylan Russell, five years old from Tomball. All right, these sheep are a little slow tonight. Lailana Aguirre, six years old from Houston. There we go. Nicely done. Lailana's got some speed. She's got some distance. She's got some moves. Brooks Adams. Come on, Brooks. Brooks taking it around the side, trying to take out a photographer, trying to take out a boy.